It is the weekend and a perfect time for me to settle down with a nice new clinical trial. And what I have today is a newly released study of soriamfetol for ME-CFS or myelogencephalomyelitis chronic fatigue syndrome. So let's see if this medication can help fatigue in ME-CFS. Here's the paper. Soriamfetol improves daily fatigue symptoms in adults with myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, after eight weeks of treatment. Very clear title, get straight to the point. I don't think this is an open access paper, but I did put a link in the description. So good luck. I hope you're able to get a copy if you're interested in it. And the study was conducted by investigators out of Michigan in the United States. The basic idea is soramphadol is a dopamine and norepinephrine or noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor. So it increases the availability of those two neurotransmitters and it encourages wakefulness during the day. It's FDA approved in the United States for excessive daytime sleepiness, especially due to narcolepsy or sleep apnea. And it is logical to hypothesize that a drug like this could help some people with ME-CFS, but we don't know until we try. Now, this is a placebo-controlled, randomized, double-blind trial, so classic randomized control trial, but it has 38 patients. So, of course, that's a tiny sample, so no matter what the results are, we should be very cautious using this paper to make medical decisions. Now, in the abstract, they call this a phase four trial. I don't know what they mean by that because Phase four trials are huge with thousands of people. I would call this a phase 2B trial, which is an efficacy trial in a small group of patients. You can also call this a pilot trial. And it's basically to determine if there's any reason to conduct a larger study before you commit all that time and all that money. All right, I checked the conflicts of interest, and we see that the study was funded by Axum Therapeutics, which is the group that currently owns the medication, and the lead author, Joel Young, has served as a speaker and an advisory board member for that company. All right, now for uh, identifying ME-CFS, they use the Institute of Medicine, or IOM, criteria for ME-CFS. They enrolled and randomized the 38 people. Here are the demographics with uh, soramphetol on the left and placebo on the right. There's not much interesting here, so I'm not going to spend any time with this. In terms of treatment, everyone started with 75 milligram tablets of soramphetol each morning or the equivalent blinded placebo. And then participants could titrate up to a max of 150 milligrams of the medication per day. And basically everyone did that. They went up to the, the highest dose. Now, the main outcome was the fatigue symptom inventory or the FSI, which gives two scores. It gives a score for fatigue intensity, and it gives a score for fatigue interference of daily activities. And they had a number of secondary outcomes as well that I'm not going to go over. Um, in terms of determining efficacy, they tested for significant group differences at week six and at week eight, and they just used t-tests. Very simple design. When you can answer a question with a simple design, that's definitely the way to go. So let's get into the main outcome, which is fatigue severity. Higher means more fatigue. So we want to see the lines go down. That means they're improving. Now, this is the change score chart, which shows you how fatigue went down from baseline. And baseline is zero or that straight black line you can see. All right, so the gray line is placebo. The blue line is the treatment. The placebo uh, wasn't very interesting. It did have this little dip of fatigue at week two, but then it came back pretty close to baseline at week three. I guess we can call that the placebo effect. It was pretty short-lived, um, but that's not really our concern right now. We're really focused on week six and week eight for group differences. Now, at week six, the treatment did not reduce fatigue better than placebo. But at week eight, it did. 
And we can see this little dip of fatigue going from week six to week eight. I don't know what caused that additional kind of decrease of fatigue. I, I'm just not sure, but it was enough for the medication to lower fatigue significantly more than placebo. So again, it didn't reach significance at six, but at week eight, it did. Now, if my calculations are correct, fatigue was reduced on average by 27% by the medication. Some people on the medication had less improvement than that, of course, and then others had more improvement than that. And by the way, while the soriamphetol reduced fatigue severity, it did not significantly reduce fatigue interference, which I'm not showing here. And that means we don't have evidence that the medication increased how much patients could do, like the physical activity they could do from day to day. In the next study, I'm assuming there will be a next study because it helped fatigue. But when they do that, they should consider using activity monitors to objectively measure daily functioning. That can be more accurate than self-report. So that's really the main finding. There are also some improvements with some self-reported cognitive function measures. Uh, again, they could explore that further in future studies using objective cognitive tests. It'd be interesting to see if this actually improves cognitive performance. Uh, regarding safety and tolerability, everything looked good with side effects. In fact, it seemed to me that the placebo group had more issues than the treatment group, which is a good sign for treatment tolerability. But in any case, uh, there wasn't really anything um, concerning with the side effects that were reported. So let me give my overall assessments of the study. In general, patients had some benefits from the treatment. It's hard to get statistical significance with 20 versus 20 people or, or less. And that's one big reason why clinical trials typically have hundreds of participants, because you typically need that to have the statistical power to get significance. So the fact that they had significant results suggests that the medication does do something genuinely helpful. But there definitely has to be a larger study to know for sure. The main limitation I think the study has in, in determining the impact of the treatment is the study was just too short to know if this is going to be a long-term solution for MECFS. Uh, obviously, a next study will need to measure the response over a longer period of time. Something like six months would be great. So should you try this in the meantime? Should you try it now? Obviously, this is pretty experimental for MECFS, even though it is FDA approved for other conditions, and your physician can prescribe it. And as I just mentioned, the side effects seem to be mild and limited, so your physician may be willing to have you try it. Uh, one other note is, I didn't show you these charts, but some of the evidence they showed suggests that the benefits come on pretty quickly, so you don't have to try it for months and months and months to know if you're going to get a benefit from it. It looks to me that you'll know within a week or two if it's going to be useful, which, which can be handy. Now, having said all that, this is definitely not for everyone. It's not appropriate for everyone. Almost definitely not a good idea for people with uncontrolled high blood pressure, because if you increase norepinephrine, you're going to increase blood pressure by constricting the blood vessels. Probably not a good idea for people who are prone to anxiety issues, because again, because of effects of norepinephrine or noradrenaline. Um, also, other psychiatric issues may be contraindicated. Definitely not allowed in uh, women who are pregnant because the animal study suggests that it we can affect the fetus. And there are some important drug interactions that your physician will have to check before prescribing this. So uh, this may be another tool for the treatment of MECFS, especially for those people who have symptoms of excessive daytime sleepiness. It's too early to say how important of a tool this will be but it's something to keep an eye on. And I always want to share brand new treatment information when they become available in, in the science world. Uh, by the way, on that note, another clinical study came out last week, like a day or two after this one, and, and that is looking at pyridostigmine for MECFS. And I'm probably going to talk about that in the next video because that medication has been 
capturing a lot of attention for MECFS treatment. So I will be back soon, and thanks for listening.